morning friends and welcome to story time at the Pea Ridge Community Library. Um, today we're going to be reading three books that are centered around feelings. So find a comfy seat and we'll begin. Alright friends, so the first story that we're going to be reading is called Blue Whale Blues by Peter Carnavas. Well, <clears throat> one blue morning, Penguin heard Whale singing softly to himself. I've got the blue whale blues, I've got the blue whale blues, blue whale blues. <laughs> Feeling blue whale, asked Penguin. Look at my bike, said Whale. I don't know which way it goes. You see his bike? It's actually a shopping cart. <laughs> Penguin laughed. Oh, whale, he said. Don't be blue. It's just upside down. Whale felt much better. His bike's up, right side up. But a short time later, Penguin heard whale singing again. I've got the blue whale blues, I've got the blue whale, blue whale blues. Why so blue, whale? asked Penguin. It's my bike again, said whale. It's all wet. Penguin laughed. Oh, whale, he said. Don't be blue. You can use my towel. Whale felt much better. You see how his friends are helping him clean off his bike? But later on, Penguin heard Whale singing again. I've got the blue whale blues. I've got the blue whale, blue whale blues. You look blue, Whale, said Penguin. It's my helmet this time, said Whale. I don't know where to put it. Penguin laughed. Oh, Whale, he said. Don't be blue. Put it on your nose. Whale felt much better. Is that where a helmet goes, guys? It goes on their heads, right? They're being silly. At last, everything was ready. Whale and Penguin hopped on, held on tight, and nothing happened. Why aren't we moving? said Whale. Penguin wasn't listening. He could see something strange heading their way. Oh goodness, what do you think it is? What is that? whispered Whale. And Turtle said, it's a bike. You see the turtle riding the bike? Whale slumped onto the ocean floor. Um, Penguin, said Whale. I don't think my bike is a bike. I think you're right, said Penguin. And Penguin, said Whale, I think you need legs to ride a bike. And I don't have any legs. I think you're right, said Penguin. And then, <clears throat> Penguin laughed. And this time, so did Whale. A pig blew well belly laugh. Ha 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 Whale felt much better. And after that, Whale forgot all about the bike, and he stopped feeling blue. Even when his guitar broke. Aw oh, man, that's not a guitar whale. The end. What a good story. Blue Whale Blues by Peter Carnavas. The next story we're going to read is called Something Might Happen by Helen Lester, illustrated by Lynn Munsinger.
Itchy Fidget trembled all over. No, nothing had happened to him, but it might. You see him? Does he look scared or does he look happy? Twitchy was afraid of almost everything. His bottle of shampoo sat unopened on the shelf. What if it got all bubbly and the shampoo wouldn't rinse off and the birds would be attracted to his head thinking he was a bubble bath and they'd stay there for weeks? You see the birds in the bird's nest? He wouldn't need a cereal because the crunchy noises might startle him causing him to jump and hit his head on the lamp. You see his cereal down here spilling out? He found his sneakers especially scary. Suppose he put them on the wrong feet and he had to walk cross-legged for the rest of his life. That'd be difficult, wouldn't it? You see how he's walking? Twitchy lived in a leafy little hut he had carefully designed. No windows or door. Something might want to get in. And no roof, after all. A roof would cave in. Twitchy put a hat on his doll so its big spooky eyes wouldn't frighten him. And there he sat in his dreary little hut waiting for something to happen. Knock, knock. Twitchy twitched. Somebody was at his non-door. Twitchy, called his fellow lemurs. You must come. There's going to be a parade today with drums and trombones and everything. Thank you, said Twitchy, but I'd rather not. Something might happen. Like what, they asked. Like, I might get bopped with a drumstick or sucked into a trombone. So the lemurs left until another day. That's sad he missed the parade, isn't it, boys and girls? Knock, knock. Twitchy flinched. Twitchy called his fellow lemurs. You must come. There's going to be a big marshmallow roast. All you can eat. Um, thank you, said Twitchy, but I'd rather not. Something might happen. Such as, they asked, such as, what if a marshmallow got stuck on my shirt and I backed into another lemur with his marshmallow stuck on his pants and he backed into another lemur with a marshmallow stuck on his hair bow? Twitchy shivered and his voice trailed off. So the lemurs left for another day. Knock, knock. Twitchy shuddered. Twitchy, called his fellow lemurs, you simply must come. There's going to be a huge 4th of February party with funny hats, confetti, and even balloons. Thank you, said Twitchy, but I'd rather not. Something might happen. What thing? They asked. Well, my funny hat might fall over my eyes and I'd trip into a pile of confetti and get so buried no one could even find me. And baboons, even baboons? So the lemurs left. Then one day, something did happen. Twitchy Fidget's Aunt Bridget Fidget dropped in for a visit, a visit. <laughs> and she was none too pleased as she rearranged her clothes. You certainly don't make it easy having visitors plunge through your non-roof, she snapped. And just look at you, newsy hair, skinny as a snail, and no shoes. You need a fixin'. Twitchy twitched. A fixin'. Aunt Bridget Fidget squirted a little blob of shampoo onto Twitchy's head and in no time had worked him into a lather. Then she hosed him down and off came the bubbles, just like that. Twitchy couldn't believe it. Nothing happened. Now open wide, Aunt Bridget Fidget came at Twitchy with a loaded spoon, and as he opened his mouth to scream, she shoveled in a large serving of cereal. Suck with a mouthful, 
twitchy, chewed, crunch, crunch, crunch. Oddly, he was so taken with the delicious flavor, the crunching sound didn't bother him, and nothing happened. Aunt Bridget Fidget went on. You know, young man, what I've always said about going barefoot gets you dusty feet. Now, on with these sneakers. Twitchy trembled. Which one was right? Which one was the left? Slowly, he put the left shoe on his right foot and the right shoe on his left foot. Then, knees knocking, he stood up and he walked. Almost normally. And nothing happened. And take that silly hat off your doll. Twitchy did. Not so scary after all. Aunt Bridget Fidget eyed Twitchy, surveying her handiwork. That's an improvement, a definite improvement. Satisfied, she turned to leave. But wait, there was a problem. How in the leafy green world do you expect me to get out of here? Fly? Twitchy felt fluffy, full, and fashionable in his sneakers. He had an answer. With nimble fingers, he dug out a window, then another, and finally a door. He planted a big smooch on Aunt Bridget Fidget's furry cheek and waved goodbye. Then he set out on his own to look for wonderful parades for marshmallow roast, and he couldn't wait for the next 4th of February. The end. That was a good story, wasn't it, friends? Our final story is called It's Tough to Lose Your Balloon by Jarrett Krizoka. tough to lose your balloon, but it'll make Grandma smile from the sky. You see Grandma in the plane? And it's sad to drop your sandwich in the sand, but it'll make some seagulls very happy. It's never fun when you break a toy, but you'll have fun fixing it with Grandpa. It's the worst to have wet shoes. Oh goodness, she stepped in a big old puddle. But it's the best to go barefoot. It's frustrating when your ice cream melts, but your cone will make a great hat for your scoop. Even the ice cream's happy. It hurts to get a scrape, but you'll get a cool bandage. It might even glow in the dark. scary when you have a new babysitter, but you get to stay up late. That's always fun. So when life gives you rain, look for the rainbow. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to Storytime this week. We miss you all, and we hope with that you're all happy and healthy. Um, and don't forget to look for the rainbows in your lives this week. Parents, I'll be posting some crafts for you and your kiddos to complete on the um, after you story time today. And bye, friends.